Welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today we're going to take a look at installing the Yezu FTM400 into the Wrangler. Stick around and we'll get right to it. So before we get started, let's kind of take a look at what we're working with. You can see the uh, quarter wave mag mount right there on the passenger side. And then if we slide around, you can see my primary Comet uh, 5 8 wave antenna over on this side. So right now the Comet is connected to the 857 inside the Jeep. And we're going to be leaving the 857, uh, but we want to add the FTM 400 to it. So we're going to put the FTM 400 on the primary antenna that's really hard to see with things hanging on the wall. And we're going to put the 857 on the mag mount. Uh, currently the mag mount is unused. You may can even see the connector right there in the windshield, right in the center of the screen. So currently I've got the 857 body mounted under the driver's seat. So we're gonna take the 400 and put it under the passenger seat. So first thing we're gonna have to do is pull the passenger seat out. Now I've kind of taken some measurements best I can. It's kind of hard to work underneath the seat, uh, but I took some measurements and I believe that FTM 400 is going to fit without too much issues underneath the passenger seat. All right, let's go ahead and get that seat yanked out of here. All right, so it was a bit tougher than I was expecting to get those four bolts out. They really like Loctite at the Jeep factory. Uh, I need to take out, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, there's a Torx bit here uh, that holds the seatbelt on. Wouldn't you know it? It's the very one I'm missing. So I think I'm going to be able to work around this just by leaning the seat back far enough to get a drill in there. Maybe a little difficult, but I think I can manage it. I've only got two screws to get down through the floorboard. So I think I can hold the seat back with one hand and run a drill with the other and go ahead and get the uh, mobile mounting bracket fastened to the bottom of the Jeep. Okay, so now that we got the body mounted underneath the passenger seat, looks like all the uh, measurements turned out fine. We got plenty of clearance all the way around the radio. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the front seat bolts back in, and then we'll get around to moving the antenna and wiring up the control head. All right, so what I'm doing now is I've got the antenna disconnected from the 857 that's under the driver's seat. Uh, it runs back up uh, through here to a penetration point. Uh, in the firewall. So we're going to, and it's also run underneath the plastic trim. I'm going to pop that plastic trim piece up right now. Go ahead and get this out and see if I can't get fed over to that side of the Jeep where we can tie it into the 400. Okay, so now that we've got the antenna run around, we need to go ahead and get the power cable run uh, back out to the battery. Now I've got one power cable already in here that runs over to the 857, but we're gonna be pulling a new one to run the uh, FTM 400. Now something really cool about a Jeep, right behind this is an access port that goes through the firewall. So it's a real nice place to run cables uh, when you need to. So I'm just gonna stick a little device in there and pop that out. And we'll just go ahead and finish pulling this off. And it can be a little aggravating down there on the bottom. But once you get that popped off, you can probably see that port right there where I've already run one power cable through. So I did go ahead and put power poles on one end of this. Uh, first thing I did uh, when I pulled the radio out of the box, I cut that factory power cable off and went ahead and put power poles on it. We power pole everything here makes life so much simpler moving forward. Aha, I think we have success. I have wire out here on this side. So just clearing a little bit more of that foam insulation out of the way. 
seem to have done the trick. All right, so I'm gonna pull out just a little bit of extra and we'll go ahead and pop these two plastic uh, rivets out here so we can get this power cable run back behind the trim here. Make it a little cleaner install. And these things are always notorious for breaking. Well, let's see if we can manage to get them out without breaking them today. Usually have a bunch of these on hand extra, but I'm not able to locate those, so hopefully we don't break anything today. Oh yeah, I think that's gonna work just fine. So we're just gonna leave that underneath for now and not power it up or not put it on the, connect it to the radio yet because we don't have it connected up to the battery. I wanna get that connected first before we hook that up to the radio. So we'll put those little rivets back in and let's see if we can wire that thing up to the battery. All right, let's see if we can get this thing uh, wired up here to the battery. Now, one of the things you wanna make sure you do any install like this is get a fuse up close to the battery. So I've got a fuse holder here. Just got to get it wired into this power cable that runs back to the radio. If you ever want hate comments on YouTube, just start putting connectors on things. All kinds of experts will come out and tell me exactly what I'm doing wrong here. But as long as the connections are tight, don't come off, I think we'll be okay. And we'll go ahead and drop that fuse in. We're still not connected to the radio yet. But that fuse will help protect us in case of uh, any kind of short happens from wires rubbing together or whatnot over time. Now, the one last thing I wanna do is I wanna Brady label this. I like to have Brady labels handy uh, so that I can remember what's what. Because if I come up here six months from now, I'm not going to remember which, uh, which one of these power cables goes to which radio. So a new one that we just installed, we'll just label it 400. So that in the future, it'll be really easy for me to tell which is which. These things right here, man, these things are super handy when you're uh, doing wire penetrations or running cables or whatever. Labeling things just makes it so nice when you come back to it later and trying to remember what you've done, what wire goes where. I'll leave a link to these guys down in the description below. If you're not using them, you should be. So now it says 400 on there, and I'll know that that goes to the FTM 400. So last thing I want to do is kind of neaten these wires up and wire tie those together so that they don't uh, come down and start rubbing on the hood. All right, that should keep everything under the hood nice and tidy. Got our fuse in there to protect our circuit. We've got it labeled so we'll know what's uh, happening next time around. I think we can go ahead and close the hood up, guys. All right, so now let's discuss mounting options for this radio. Uh, I've kind of gone back and forth with it, uh, but I think I found something that may work, may not. I'm gonna, at least going to try it. Uh, you guys may have seen a video I did, it's probably been a year ago, about the $9 radio mount. Well, I'm going to try that again. The FTM has a mounting hole right in the back of it. So I went down today, I believe this was a 1032 uh, screw that fits right into the back of it. So I took one of those $9 radio mounts. I've got, or actually cell phone mounts, but uh, I've got several of those around and I wasn't able to mount it since it's got a single screw point like I've done some of the rigs uh, in the past. But what I did is I pulled the, uh, the thing apart. I drilled a hole in it uh, right here that would accept that 1032. And then I put a small piece of foam on the back. And the reason for the foam is if it's just plastic on this plastic, uh, it, it wanted to spin with me, but once I put the foam on there, that seemed to uh, kind of help uh, alleviate that. So I may, you know, at some point in the future, change to a, 
I want that on that side. Uh, we'll just try that side for now. You know, I may change this in the future and go to a, uh, you know, a different style mount, but I'm at least gonna give this a shot first and see what happens. So it doesn't quite sit flush on there. It kind of pulls down because it's only one screw, but that seems like it's pretty stable. So I think we're just gonna go ahead and mount that up. Don't wanna over tighten that. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and mount that up and see what that'll look like uh, in the Jeep sitting on the dashboard. Let's move over to the Jeep. All right, so with this mount, it's just a suction cup stuck on the window. I'm just gonna unscrew this all the way. And that little ball will pop out of there. So what I did for the radio is I took this little ball out. I trimmed all of these uh, pieces off of here. And then I punched a hole right through there. Came out on the back side that would accept that uh, 1032 screw. So let's go ahead and see. Guys, I think that's gonna work nice. Nine bucks for a radio mount. Now we'll give it a run and see what happens. Now we just need to get the uh, wiring for the control head run down to the body. All right, well, there it is installed. I did go ahead and enter my call sign, but that is the only thing I have done. Um, not sure which volume is up loud there. There we go. Get that one cut down, that one's cut down. But anyway, guys, there it is. It's installed in the Jeep. Now I just got to figure out how to get this thing programmed up so we can start talking on it. All right, we'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, 7-3.